Now we're going to get into the configuration of the management tunnel using machine certificate authentication and then the user tunnel using user certificate authentication. Alright, let's go into my ASA and here's my ASDM. I am running ASA version 9.13. You don't have to have this version, uh, but the latest one would probably be helpful. Then also I'm running ASDM 7.13. So let's start off by taking a look at a connection profiles because we're working with a management tunnel and a user tunnel. So let's start with a management tunnel first. So I created a connection profile called machine tunnel. Okay, and if I edit this, um, my name is called machine tunnel. Uh, my authentication is certificate only because it is only applicable with certificates for management tunnel because there's no user interaction involved. Uh, put in my VPN pool of, from my ASA and then I put in a DNS server in my lab as well as a domain um, and then the rest of it is from a, a group connection perspective just like a typical VPN tunnel I configure a group URL so I have a, a entry for herblab-asa1.cisco.com slash management VPN that's the group URL that uh, my <coughs> the client will connect to turn off uh, CSD for any connect because you don't really need that. Okay, and then you go back to um, the basic and let's take a look at the group policy associated to this connection profile. Go to manage. So my group policy is called the uh, machine tunnel group. I edit that. Uh, so you want to make sure banner is off because uh, banner requires user, user interaction. Um, and then also make sure SSL VPN client and I v2 is checked if you uh, are using Ike v2. Uh, server really nothing I just put in my DNS it with a server in my lab, my domain and then the rest of it is just split tunnel as an example. Um, you want to do tunnel all because you want everything to go up the machine or management tunnel. Okay, Nothing else changed and then go to the AnyConnect side. AnyConnect side um, you want to make sure the client bypass protocol is enabled and then you want to have the right uh, client profile associated to this specific group policy. So I have one called Management Tunnel. But don't worry about it right here because we'll, we'll, we can configure this in the Client Profile section. It will automatically populate here. Okay. And then um, last the thing you need is the custom attribute. You'll need to have a custom attribute called Management Tunnel All Allowed and the value needs to be true. So you can add it in here. Management tunnel all allowed and the value needs to be true. Um, make sure it's in here as well as um, there's another section outside of here that you create this custom attribute because I did this earlier outside of this and then I make sure it's in here. Okay, so that's it for the management tunnel here. Now let's go into the uh, custom attribute that I talked about. So underneath the network access, the advanced, there's a any kind of custom attribute so you need to create one called management tunnel all allowed and the description is the same name that's it and then the next one you need to create is called the any kind of custom attribute names so um, now the type is the management tunnel all allowed and the name and values for that type has to be true and true so make sure you have that configured okay then once you do this and then uh, when you go back to your the profile that I showed you earlier just make sure that value is there for the custom attributes okay so let's go back into the go to the any kind of client profile so let's go and take a look at the machine tunnel so this is the machine tunnel that I've created so um, so you'll need to create one and make sure you create one and pick the right profile usage so there's a new profile usage called uh, it's at the bottom any connect management VPN profile so that's new make sure you pick that one okay and then so I created one already and then um, I associated uh, to my machine tunnel group policy that I showed you earlier okay so if you go inside that tunnel policy uh, profile you can see here uh, some of these certificate start before log on values have been grayed out because it's no longer valuable for management tunnel so really just need to configure uh, preferences part two of the trusted network detection portion of it so if it's a TND if it's, you're on the corporate network you want to disconnect you don't want VPN if you're not on the corporate network you want to use VPN so that's the connect option my trusted domain is um, 
me just scroll up and down here. My trusted domain is irvinesecurity.lab. That's what's inside my lab there. And then my DNS server is uh, .111. Okay. Um, and move on down to everything else. Uh, nothing you need to configure. And then the last is the certificate list. You need to add a server list. So we'll create one. I created one that's called the display. This is the name that'll show up in your any kind of client profile there. So it's called Management VPN. That's just the name I created. And I enter the FQDN of my Irv La Irvine Lab ASA called irvlab-asa1.cisco.com. And then I put in the group username, Management VPN. And that's it. Everything else is just default. Okay. All right, so that's pretty much done for the management tunnel piece. Now we need to also configure the user tunnel, because right, that's how the user would connect, initiate the user tunnel when they log into their PC. So now let's go back to the connection profile. I created a connection profile called user auth, and let me go and edit that one. Again, so it's called user auth, and again here, in this case, I mean, I am using user certificate authentication so I've selected the authentication method of certificate only okay and then uh, SAML is none my VPN is the same I'm grabbing it from the VPN pool locally and my group policy is the uh, user group uh, user auth group policy that I created but hold on to that thought um, let's finish down here DNS servers in my lab my domain and then my uh, you also need to create a group alias, right? This is um, the group alias that the user connection, uh, the client will connect to when they connect to initiate the VPN, the user VPN uh, tunnel. And my, I have an entry called irvlab asa one ciscocom slash user auth, okay? Now, if that's co once that's configured, uh, let me go back to the top of my um, basic configuration. And if I go into my group policy for user auth, and I go into group user auth policy, I edit this, and um, again, this is my policy. I remove you the banner because I don't want any pop-up or interaction. Make sure my tunneling protocol is what I wanted. Uh, Server is all still the same, and let's go into advanced. Now the split tunnel here is um, um, I just have nothing have don't have any split tunnels so it's just default inherit and then on the any connect side um, everything is default and then I just have the user auth profile from the, the client profile that I created outside in another section so it's really just a typical user VPN tunnel creation that you would build nothing uh, out of the ordinary here Okay, and let's go to the client profile side here. So if we go to the client profile, right, the client profile is needed for the client to connect back to ASA. So I created one called user auth profile, and the profile usage is any connect VPN profile, a typical profile. So if I edit this, uh, now you can see this is more of a normal feature, nothing to configure um, except the certificate store. I, as part of the, the preference part one I want to look at the user store uh, for the user cert so I check certificate override I pick uh, user by default it's an all right and all means it can look in the machine store or the or the user store but I want to pick the user search so I pick the user profile here the same applies to Mac um, I go to the part two again it's TND trusted network detection uh, if I'm the corporate network, I don't want VPN, I want to pause. If I'm untrusted, I want to connect. And then I just put in my uh, lab domain and DNS server. And then last, it'd be uh, the server list. So you have to add in a server list. So hit edit. So I put in a display name called user auth and my FQDN of my ASA, as well as uh, the group name I call it user auth. That's it. Okay. Now I did something a little more specific here because I was matching something unique on uh, the user certificate. So I, I went into the user matching field here and I checked to see if a if I want to make sure the certificate that the client is using is from a corporate uh, CA, a specific CA. 
and in this my case I have a Windows 2016 CA so that's the name called Win 2016 CA so I'm checking for issuer dash a common name okay and then it has to come from Irvine, Irvine security dot lab uh, DC so these are the field that I created to check for specific uh, info on the certificate it's not required it's something I did um, but it's not required okay so that's pretty much it now I'll cover real quickly on the certificates side since it's all on certificates um, I am I have the CA or the certificate of my Windows 2016 root CA imported in here so because you want to make sure you trust the entire certificate chain so I have the certificate of the 2016 uh, CA in here and at the same time I also created an identity cert of the ASA uh, that's signed by the Windows 2016 root CA okay so I created the CSR and um, applied it to the Windows 2016 CA and then it signed it and I uh, installed it in here okay and if I go back to the any connection any kind of connection profile underneath the device certificates. Um, the trust point is trust point number five, which is the ASA um, device certificate signed by the 2016 CA in my lab. So that's pretty much it. Um, so I'll quickly review uh, what the user experience looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and show you right now. I have a test client connected. It's again, it's a Windows 10 VM, so it's connected with the machine tunnel and you can see here um, the authentication mode is certificate okay and then if I go back into the client here the machine is not logged in I'm going to go ahead and log in Okay, now you can see that the client automatically established its own VPN tunnel connection and with no user interaction. And you can see here underneath the VPN tab, user tunnel is active. If I switch over to the ASA side, you can see that a transition from the Windows 10 VM over to Jerry, which is a user um, authentication and it is doing certificate authentication right here authentication mode equals certificate okay thanks for watching and hopefully this helps you with the configuration process